everyone, and welcome to Mr. <coughs> this is the Caribbean, and here is Antigua and Barbuda. Now, come on, let's see what's been going on there, shall we? Antigua is the bottom one, and Barbuda is up here. But there's a whole lot of little islands that are part of this country too. Many with rather curious names, like Crump Island, Cinnamon Island, Mouse Island, Goat Island, and my favourite, Prickly Pear Island. People first came to these islands around 5,000 years ago, but no one knows exactly who they were. Then the Arawak people arrived, circa 500 to 280 BC. They had island hopped there from the Orinoco River in Venezuela. These folks were agriculturalists, skilled in ceramics, but their stylized bowls and jars could not protect them from the Caribs, a warlike tribe with a tradition of cannibalism who conquered the Arawaks there and no doubt ate a few to celebrate. This occurred sometime after 1100, which was when many Arawaks decided to leave, thus escaping the Carib invasion. But if the Caribs thought they were the undisputed champions of the Caribbean, they soon had to think again because there, in the blue corner, is Christopher Columbus! That's right, Columbus sighted the islands here in 1493 and gave Antigua the name it bears today, after an icon in the Cathedral of Seville back in Spain. As for Barbuda, well, that means bearded in Spanish, and who knows why they called it that. Even so, Spain never colonized these islands, seeing little value in them. It was the British who decided to settle on them, taking Antigua in 1632 and Barbuda in 1684. African slaves were shipped over to the islands to work on sugar plantations, and it is said old world diseases were responsible for decimating the Carib population there. 1834 saw slavery abolished, and the Africans were freed to work for wages if they could get it. Life was hard even with the shackles off, and few attempts were made to lighten the load of the people. That is, until the first half of the 1900s, when a certain seven-foot-tall Salvation Army officer called Veer Bird took up their cause. After becoming president of the Antigua Trades and Labor Union, he fought for improved work conditions and higher pay for the black majority. His efforts culminated in the 1981 independence of Antigua and Barbuda from the United Kingdom, and he served as the first prime minister. So the years went by, and Antigua and Barbuda produced some of the world's great cricket players like Sir Viv Richards and the acclaimed writer Jamaica Kincaid, while whispers of corruption surrounded their politics and the economy began to depend more and more on tourism. Speaking of which, you would not have wanted to visit in September 2017, as that was when the Category 5 Hurricane Irma tore through the region, completely trashing Barbuda, forcing its people to evacuate to Antigua. Just about every building was damaged or destroyed by the merciless winds. And on that happy note, we end our super quick look at this country. Let's hope Barbuda rebuilds itself better than before, but for now, bye-bye. <laughs>